Welcome to the uh, AudioShare integration with Control 4 driver setup demo. Uh, in this video we're going to cover the basics of setting up an AudioShare um, drivers to be able to allow wall stations to act as navigators. Um, so we will start with a basic project. We've already created some rooms um, just to keep time short. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our wiring room the AudioShare hub driver. Now to do that we'll just go to the search tab, make sure the online database is selected, and the hub driver is actually um, uses the AV switch proxy so you can go find it under the AV switch and under manufacturer you'll see AudioShare. Anyway in here is the um, AudioShare 16 station hub and that's the driver we want. If you happen to see the AudioShare just 16 station that's a, a driver that's going to go away one day so um, if it happens to show up just ignore it. The one you want is a 16 station hub. So go ahead and double click on that and that will add it over here to the project. And Then we will give it a name so I'll just call it AudioShare um, hub. Okay, now what we need to do is add wall station devices or drivers. So we'll go back to our uh, search menu and we'll go up to others and pull down manufacturers and you'll see audio share and go ahead and double click on a wall station driver. Actually before we do that we'll select theater and we'll add the wall station driver into the theater. And then we'll also add one into the kitchen and we'll also add one into the master bathroom. Okay, so now we've got the audio share drivers assigned. We can go into each audio share wall station device and we can change its audio share address to whatever the address is of the wall station in that room. This is going to be the audio share address. So, for example, in my theater, my audio share wall station is at address 12. And then I can push set. Don't forget to push set or else it won't save it. In the kitchen, my audio share address is 21. Set. And in my master, the audio share address is 25. And set. Now, when that's done, um, that will actually send the information to the audio share hub. And I'll show that just shortly. But I also wanted to show some information, key information here. The C4 room ID, which currently is set to 296, and the C4 room name, which is the theater, the room ID is the actual room ID within the Control 4 project for the room theater. Um, and also, theater is the name of that room. Now, it, uh, the audio share drivers, uh, specifically the wall station driver and the audio share hub driver, rely on this information. If it is not there, um, then there was probably either a problem with the driver, if you got a wrong version of the driver, um, or there's some other problem in your project. But those should automatically detect um, when, when the driver is first loaded. Um, you also notice that the status field says bound to audio share hub driver. Uh, that's what it should say when things are working correctly. Um, if it's not working correctly, um, it could say something like disconnected or, or whatever. But what you really want to see is make sure it says bound to audio share hub driver. We'll ignore all these other settings for now. But let's go ahead and go back to the audio share hub driver and see, uh, first of all, if he can see all the devices that got registered. So what we'll do is we'll go to the Actions tab and we'll click this button that says Display AS Dev Info. Once that is pushed, we'll go to the Lua screen and what it will do is it will output um, each of the devices that have registered with the AudioShare hub driver. So in this particular case, uh, there's been three AudioShare wall station drivers which have um, uh, checked in to the AudioShare hub. It'll tell us the AudioShare addresses and it will tell us the room or the device IDs for those within Control 4 as well as the room IDs and the room names. Um, so that's one way to validate that all of the drivers have properly registered themselves with the AudioShare hub driver.
is using that method. Now, the other thing we need to do is we'll look at the AudioShare hub driver and we need to make sure that its initial settings are set correctly. The very first setting um, is the control address setting. Now, this is the address that the AudioShare system sees control 4 as, as if control 4 was part of the AudioShare system. Um, the possible values range between 251 up to 254 and 254 being the default address. More times than not you'll never change this but I want to make it um, I want to bring it to your attention so that in case you have multiple integration points with an audio share system which may have different controller addresses that you make sure that these addresses are unique between each of the integration systems. So by default 254 should work just fine. Now automatic intercom, we're going to skip this property because that's uh, used for the intercom paging. We won't cover that in this video. That will be another video. And the same thing goes for the control for intercom zones and digital audio delay. And actually the dummy room. So the only other property that we need to set up is the update time property. And by default that's set to off. But we can change that to any uh, interval time uh, of interest. Um, so for example, we'll set ours to every hour. Now what this will do is every hour um, the driver will uh, grab the control force time and push that out to the audio share wall stations all the system so that the time is in sync and this is the interval at which that update will take place. The last uh, field of interest here is the status field. You notice that right now it says not connected. Uh, that is because there is not a Ethernet connection defined um, in the connections tab. So what we'll do is we'll go down to the connections tab and we will go to the network and you'll see that there is an audio share hub that's in here that wants an IP address. Now by default all audio share hubs uh, come with DHCP and the way that you can know this is if you bring up the audio share programmer and you go to system connection configure ethernet you can click the discover button and then discover and what this will do is it will go out and find all the audio share devices um, that have ethernet capability on it and it will bring them to your screen um, so here you can force a let's say for example i want to take this as hub device here I can, which I've already done, but you can force the static IP address of that device. Once you know that static IP address, you can simply take it and copy it um, and uh, store that into this audio share. Um, oh, sorry, I'm running a virtual director. But anyway, you can change that IP address of the hub device uh, there. And once you've done that correctly, this will say, this will status should change to say that it's connected to the audio share hub. So anyway, now that we've done that, we've basically have the system set up. It's, it's truly that simple. Um, to do some extended configuration for control for navigator capability, um, you can go into the audio share wall station devices and you notice that there are shortcut keys. Uh, each one of these shortcut keys corresponds to a key that's on the AudioShare wall station keypad. And what you can do is